for the last 2,000 years, maybe longer than that, maybe it's 10,000 years, I don't know. But it's if somebody has a, a healthcare event as a part of your community, the community gathers around them, right, and says, I'm going to help you in whatever way that is, right? And that looks different, clearly, you know, thousands of years ago than it does, it would today. But, you know, basically in the 1970s, health insurance plans stuck themselves in between me and my neighbor, right? Or me and my family member. Like I knew that the dollars I was helping my next door neighbor, what they were going for. Now I'm just sending my check to the health insurance plan. And so can we bring the community back to healthcare? So in 10 years, if we're super successful, I want everybody in the United States to have availability to something like this that's not health insurance. But ultimately, I want an insurance-less society. If I thought I was wrong, I wouldn't be doing this because this is hard. Like, Bitcoin is hard, healthcare is hard. All right, everyone, welcome back to Bitcoin is Hard. Today, we have the CEO of Crowd Health, Andy Schoonover. And Andy, so I haven't done as much deep dive on Crowd Health as kind of pre like other episodes that we do. So I'm excited to just, you know, shoot this like from scratch and just get to know right. each other. I'm we're very, very thankful for um, John, your like business development guy has like done our spaces at Choice and like his traveling was cool and like his passion for circular economy and all that stuff um, was why I was happy to get on the phone with him. And I, so I got a demo of Crowd Health and that's kind of where I'm coming from. But then also coming from what we've been trying to do specifically with our podcast is carve out space to talk about the intersection of personal finance and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Like, and so you, I think you uh, can go deep on this and just talk about how like healthcare costs and insurance and just all of the stuff, medical expenses, like affect people's personal finance. And so, yeah, that's like, that's kind of where I want to start. So just tell us like, what is crowd health and why I also like enjoy your entrepreneur posts on LinkedIn. So just why do you spend so much time working on this? Why is it important <laughs> to you? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it really is missional for me. Um, and I know a lot of folks, you know, listening to this podcast, it's, Bitcoin is is missional for them as well, um, and so I think there's you know tons of overlap in what I'm doing and and um, you know what your audience is really you know pumped up about and 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 plus we're we're kind of intersecting here Bitcoin and and healthcare or the monetary system and the healthcare system together. So I think that's kind of interesting too. But I'll 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 rewind um, a few years. I was I was running a healthcare technology company and um, sold that to a private equity firm had a couple years of transition and then I was back on my own didn't have health insurance because most of us as Americans get our health insurance through our employers um, so I went to healthcare.gov thinking that it was my only other option and got a, a plan for me my wife and my two girls which was 1200 bucks a month um, so 1200 bucks a month times 12 you know whatever that is fourteen thousand four hundred dollars um, if I'm doing the math mm -hmm. correctly on that um, and I was like okay well that's that's not great but I guess it's my only option. Well, I joke it worked or until I had to use it. <laughs> I had my, my little one was having ear nose or uh, went to the ear nose and throat doc because she was having recurring ear infections. Um, she had um, basically perforated her eardrum. And so the ear nose and throat docs, like she's got to get tubes in her ears. So parents out there, if you got young ones might've happened to you, it's, it's, it's a pretty normal thing. So we go to the hospital, 15 minute procedure, get the bill. It's $8,000. And I was like, holy crap, $8,000 for 15 minutes. Um, that's BS. <laughs> you know, and I was like, but I have health insurance. That's what the whole point of health insurance is. And so then I got a note from my health insurance plan that said it was medically unnecessary and they weren't going to pay for it. So I was like, forget this, man. Like if, if health insurance isn't going to pay for these things, then I'm not going to continue to pay this $1,200 a month. And so I, I canceled my health insurance. And over the next couple of years, I went uninsured and through that tried to figure out, are there tools that can allow people to navigate this, this health system without insurance? And actually what I found in that was that it's way easier to operate the system without insurance than it is with insurance. And the culmination of those, that two years of research was crowd health. And we started the company April of last year. So about a year and a half ago, um, got some seed funding and then just closed another round of funding uh, last week. And so we're off to the races trying to give people real freedom from, from health insurance. You know, the, and the missional component for me is 
look, I, I've been you know super fortunate that I can write an eight thousand dollar check. The vast majority of Americans cannot write an eight thousand dollar check without them going to significant financial distress. And so we had two hundred and fifty thousand families last year who had health insurance go bankrupt because of a health event. I mean, these are people who have health insurance and they're still going bankrupt. I mean, the whole point of insurance is if you have a big event, you don't go into financial distress. And so I was like, Man, this is not working. Um, and so, you know, I've got the ability kind of given my previous work experiences to kind of go after something hard that I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, and so that's what we're doing is, is really trying to give people, you know, freedom from health insurance through this, these set of tools. And I can, you know, go through them in, in more detail, but that's kind of the, the 20,000 foot view of what crowd health is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And this cra crowd health or crowdsourced insurance is not new, right? Cause I, I've heard of this like back in the day and like risk pools and kind of cost sharing. It's not, um, it's not new, right? Well, I think that there's been for the last, you know, 20 or 30 years, people have tried to figure this out, right? And there's a, a number of different iterations of this. And, and the ones that you mentioned are, are iterations of that. Um, and to date, they haven't really picked up, you know, steam because the health shares, for example, is, is one iteration. You have to be, you know, of the same faith as that health share to be yeah. in that. It's like and a I, credit union. Yeah, it's, it's kind of yeah. like a credit union. I was like, man, I want to make this available to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, the health shares in essence have a, a kind of a little carve out in the affordable care act that says, um, you know, if you're a health share, then you don't have to have health insurance. Otherwise the affordable care act basically said you have to have health insurance. Now that's mm -hmm. been kind of rescinded by the Trump administration, but, um, it, it defined what a health share was. And one of the parts of that is that you had to be a person of faith to do that. And I was like, man, I want everybody to have right. access to this. And so, right. you know, can we Because that's it? how we actually break the back. Like, that's how we actually break the back of the problem is Absolutely. getting it big enough. So that's what I want to do before. And sorry to the audience. If, like, I want to jump ahead to the end game and then come okay. back and get the details. Sure. Um, when crowd health succeeds, when it gets big enough, because I agree. So you iterated on other crowd shares makes it bigger bring in the bitcoin component missional component down what in 10 years five or 10 years pick your mark when like crowd health is a success or is on its way to like being very obviously a success what does the world look like like what has happened yeah so i'm 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 going to go forward by going backward real quick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for the last 2000 years maybe longer than that maybe it's 10000 years i don't know but it's mm -hmm. if somebody has a, a healthcare event as a part of your community, the community gathers around them, right, and says, I'm gonna help you in whatever way that is, right? And that looks mm -hmm. different clearly, you know, thousands of years ago than it does it would today. But you know, basically in the 1970s, health insurance plans stuck themselves in between me and my neighbor, right? Or mm -hmm. me and my family member. Like um the I knew that the dollars I was helping my next door neighbor, what they were going for. Now I'm just sending my check to the health insurance plan. And so it, it has become, um, to, 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 to me, you know, uh, so unfamiliar or so opaque, you know, that you, you just, I, that's I, central I like, planning. Like that's central, literally it, it central, is, planning. central planning. Cause I'm, and not, I was I'm like, not coordinating with my neighbor anymore. And no, a bureaucratic and, coordinator. And I think it's a sad state of affairs for me. And I, I started to get on a tangent on this, but it's like we have gotten to a place as Americans where we look at somebody in need and say somebody yeah. else will take care of that. Right. As opposed to saying, yeah. no, 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 like they're a part of my community. Like that's my responsibility to help that yeah. person. You know, and it's and it's government assistance for for the, the poor and the homeless and all these kinds of things. It's like, OK, if, if the poor didn't have an opportunity to go and get something from the government and I see them on the side of the street, I know for me, and I, I won't speak for anybody else, but I know I would be more likely to go like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and help that person, you know, but, but unfortunately I've been, I've been, you know, screwed up in my head to think, oh no, the government is going to pay, it's going to help that. And I, I think that's just a, a bad thing for humanity. So what I'm trying to well, say it is, it makes me think about. It also makes me think about our government is very focused on helping people across the world. Like, and so, like, sorry to the audience, like, take it there, but that's where it sure. goes. Like, what are we focused on? Like, what are we doing? 
What are we doing? Like, are we helping our community right here or not? Dude, you can get me on a whole another tangent on that. I'll, I'll try to stick to the point because I, you and I, I think you know probably think have similar worldviews on this. Um, and so, so what I'm saying is like, can we bring the community back to healthcare? And you know, so in ten years, if we're super successful, I want everybody in 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 the United States to have available availability to something like this that's not health insurance, right? So I, ultimately, I want an insuranceless society. That's ultimately what I would like. And now, look, I'm going up against United Healthcare, um, which mm-hmm. is the seventh largest company country. Co- excuse me, seventh largest company in the world, according you know, if you if you measure it by revenue, and mm-hmm. you know, lots and lots of money. So, um, you know, we've we've got this medical industrial complex that's health insurance plans and lobbyists who are paying yep. legislators who are going to try to crush what I'm doing. And so yeah. it is, it is an uphill battle, but man, like, isn't it worth fighting for, right? Like this is something I'm, I'm, I'm willing to swing the bat at. And here's the reason why most people don't want to swing the bat because they're getting paid by one of yep. those entities, right? Yep. I don't yep. give a shit. Like I'm not getting paid by any of those entities, nor do I want yep. to be. Um, and Perfect. so I'm like, I want to, I'm going to swing hard at it. And if we can hit yep. the ball hard, then let's do it. Right. Let's, yep. let's give people an opportunity. And so the Dude. benefits of this is you can, you're, 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 look, you know, I love the idea of the sovereign individual. I hear it a lot in the Bitcoin cruise, but you, you can't be a sovereign individual if you're relying upon a health insurance plan. Yep. To tell you what you can and can't do with your own health. Yep. I mean, like money is an, is a really good thing that to be sovereign, but if you're not sovereign in your health, like if you're not responsible for your own health care, like how can you truly be a sovereign individual? Like you're not, yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're just not. And so 100%. I, want, I want everybody to be like, I'm responsible for my own health care. I'm responsible for who I choose as a doctor. The decisions are between me and my doctor without the government getting involved. Like that ultimately is what I want. Perfect. So, okay. With that as the guiding light and guiding as the end game, this is actually super fortunate because the, this has been percolating in my brain all week. And I didn't know that you had a semi like private equity background. So I'm actually very thankful to have heard that in your intro, because here's what I want to take it to next. I kind of want to help me understand this. All Bitcoin companies, so all kind of Bitcoin companies as a whole, and I would kind of even take like tech companies as a whole, like biotech. Like I'll throw in like like I'm wearing like a levels patch right now. Yeah, man, I, I love it. Control my own content. Like I have a long thing of like like my my water bottle is like tracking to my Acapulco Health app, so I can like know in my brain like am I drinking enough ounces of water per day? Like I'm working on using like technology to take control of my own health data and like make positive decisions about it. So I kind of want to, I kind of want, and Levels talks about the like food industrial complex and talks about how the food pyramid is broken and how you, we need our own data and being in control of our own data about how food affects our health and all these things. And they talk about how the establishment and the financial incentives of the establishment rotate down all these things. So Bitcoin, whether it's in finance, like trying to tackle finance or reform finance, healthcare and trying to reform like healthcare and kind of each of these XYZ things. Here's something that I'm a little bear market pessimistic about right now. Okay. I'm, and I'm, and I'm projecting, I'm like just laying it all out. Like I have this kind of like persistent pessimism that, that I don't normally have. I don't normally have, but I have it right now. How do we know that our investors, like your seed investors and your series A investors and, in and not even directly just talking about yours, the people that backed all of these things, level mm-hmm. all of these things. How do we know that they are in it for the fight all the way? Because I hear it in your voice that we're in it for the fight all the way. And I could easily record with you and talk to you right now for an hour and a half about the details of how we're doing it and help the audience understand how they're doing it and why they want to sign up and all these things. But I have this like underlying angst right now and i have had it for just this kind of like last month a little bit of like how do we know that these guys these investors these seed investors and vc culture and private equity culture is in it for the long haul to actually break the back of the establishment like or how do we know that these companies like we don't just get sold to the establishment and kind of like we tinkered at the edges but we never actually like so what do you think about all of that yeah, it's, it's interesting. Tinkering at the edges. I, I saw a video the other day of this. It's It was an apartment building and 
the, the camera was looking down and there was this huge just blaze of fire. And this guy comes out with his little, you know, like bull and he goes like that. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah like none yeah. of this stuff. And, and I'm, I'm seeing tons of investments that look like that, which is all incremental, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't think incremental is going to change anything. I don't think that we can, you know, little, little, little switch here, a little switch there. Like yep. it is, the system is so corrupt that mm-hmm. I was, I'm actually sitting in, in, in Marty Bent's, uh, you know, office mm-hmm. right now. I was talking to Marty about it. And I was like, we've got to burn the whole thing down. Like it's, it's yes. all got to come do. down. It's all got to burn down. And so, you know, back to your question, it's like, look, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of stakeholders in this. Yes, the VC firms have got to get their money out in seven to 12 years is kind of their, you know, their thing. You know, I, I think it's in, in it's you got to look at the founders, right? Because oftentimes if you're successful, the VCs will not do something that the founders are not on board with ultimately. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, if, if the VCs try to go and sell crowd health, well, one, I'm the, still the majority shareholder, so they can't. Um, mm-hmm. But if they would go and try to sell health, crowd health, and I was like, I'm not in, right? And all my people are like, I'm not in if Andy's not in, right? Mm-hmm. Then there, it won't happen. And, and so, you know, I think you've got to have, you know, I, I say this humbly, and it's a little bit off the cuff, so I'll be careful how I say it. But it's like, I think you have to have people who don't, it's not about the zeros, you know, it's not about mm-hmm. the zeros. I, like I said, I made a bunch of money in my previous career. I got plenty to, uh, I could go fishing to, you know, for the rest of my life mm-hmm. if I wanted to. This truly mm-hmm. is for me. Like I, I care about my kids and my grandkids and it's not to be cliche future, but like yep. the way it's currently going is our country is going bankrupt. Like it is going to go yeah. bankrupt and, yeah. and a big chunk of it is healthcare related. Yep. So not only is yep. our company going bank, our country going bankrupt, but also, you know, our, my kids, I don't think are going to be have access to the same, you know, health care that, that, that we have today. Yep. I mean, it's going to be incrementally, not incrementally, like way worse, you know, 10 years from now than it is today. Yep. So I mean, we're seeing 15, 20 percent increase in health care costs next year. You know, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's just absurd. And, and there's that you've got to stop this. And so, yeah, the left will say. Hey, let's just do Medicare for all, right? And and to me, it's like no, 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 no. I don't want the government involved at all. You know, it's like let's let's. It's not going to end. One, one, it's not going to happen, right? It's just not going to okay. happen anytime soon. So let's take a look at the alternative. And I think all of us can agree: the li- left, the right, the center, the libertarians, whatever, can agree. Like what's currently happening is not working. Yep. Let's try yep. something new, right? Yep. Um, and I think this is a viable and- way to do that. I, yeah, and I fully feel like it's viable also, and I'm just still hung up, though, on this part of, like, the, the zeros, yeah, like, like Peter, selling out, well, you're, you're no, afraid Peter, of sellouts. Wait, it's not, and it's not even just sell out, it's like, Peter, so Peter Thiel said at Bitcoin 2022, like, the, the public stock market is, like, quasi-government control. Yeah. So, it's like, we need change-making companies to remain, and, like, I don't, I don't have a beefed up, like, I can't explain the life cycle process of a startup to a thing. Like, I don't know the whole like things of that, but does it, does it have to stay private? Like eventually, eventually the investors and the founders have to just be comfortable with cash flow. They can't be like trying to just sell the shares to the next person, right? Because eventually the crowd health pool is going to have, you know, we're going to hit somewhere. We're going to hit this, like there's four and a half million people in the pool. And like Andy is like crushing it and the team is crushing it. And there's, you know, hundreds of people like under John and it's just running, you know, like it's running. And it's eventually the founders and investors are going to have to look at each other and just be comfortable with this, like with this cash flow line. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I just feel like, and again, this is, I'm very like, I have this like pessimistic angst right now, but it feels like we're just like all so jacked up on building hockey sticks mm. that like we like, what are we gonna do when the pool is just at the nice four and a half million like mark, and it's making cash flow? Like, is am I uh, like where where am I? Where is is, is my there an alternative to public yeah. markets? Is that is that what you're ultimately yeah. saying? Yeah, I mean it's it's a really I, it's a really good question. And I think the other question is is like, is it impossible to do social good while being public? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, are, it, can we sit here and and put other companies who have examples of doing social good 
while they are while they are public? And that's a really great question. And it's actually, I hope, I hope it's a question I have to deal with at some point. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, and I, I hope I you do you. too. I no, and I hope you do too. And that's why I'm thankful for you just like allowing me to kind of go on that like journey because I truly think about that. And it's not even just about you. Like I think about it with levels, like with any of these startups, because I'm, I, I'm very emotionally attached to movement. Like taking it back to the beginning of the conversation, like everyone knows that about me. Like I'm like very emotionally attached to the movement. And it's very hard for me to split out the financial impact about Bitcoin and just like what like Marty has written on his office, like fix the money, fix the world. Like that really matters to me. And so that's the reason why I'm thankful to talk to you and talk about the details. But then I just have this like sure. thing in the back of my head that like we got to solve that end end thing too of just like how it's because to me, a Bitcoin standard makes working great again. It makes just like being an owner and an owner operator like great again. Yeah. And you can just like sit on the cash flow because you don't have to constantly be investing your money. You can sit on cash flow and SATs flow of yeah. money that actually works. Yeah. Amen. So, no. Thank so, you so I think the other question, that. right? Yeah. The other question we can say is like, how, how, do, how do I continue to try to decentralize some of the stuff that we do? So it's not held by a central, you know, authority, right? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, and and anybody who listens to this that has ideas, like, please reach out to me on Twitter or, or wherever. Um, and and I'd love to hear them because we're, we are talking about it all the time internally is like, how can we decentralize some of this stuff so that people are not leaning on us um, to do this? So, you know, if, if anybody else has any ideas, I'd, I'd love to have the conversation. I love being a part of the Bitcoin community because um, everybody is is so generous with their their thoughts and their ideas and their time and things like that. So, um, I, and I and trust me, I, I I look at all the emails and the the, the direct messages and things like that, and I, I will listen because I'm 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 a rookie in the Bitcoin space. I've only been in it for a couple of years, um, and I know that other folks are way more you know um, experienced in this than I am, and so I'm I'm happy to to hear you out on this because um, I, I that's what I want. My desire is to decentralize more of what we do. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. Look, I'll throw it right back at you and say that I think um, actually I believe a lot of the best stuff like comes from new people truly like i think the bitcoin beach example is a great example of that like mike yeah. peterson has said many times in many podcasts that he was too naive to know that oh the lightning wallets weren't supposed to get into everyone's hands and they did it so i would throw awesome. that definitely both ways on that but okay andy help us so then hit the details for us how sure. what how does the bitcoin pool look like right now and how does someone like run the numbers for us. Why is it better than them sticking with their like current health care? Yeah. Current and and just, just one quick kind of clarification. It's not a pool, yeah. right? We're not pooling okay. money together. It's okay. everybody has an account. Um, yep. And if I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'll walk through the Bitcoin expense yeah. version. So um, if you're between the ages of six and 54, it's 175 bucks a month. If you, it's a little bit more, if you're young, a little bit more, if you're old, but we'll just use the 175. So 175 goes into a a bank account. Um, Thirty dollars of that comes to us um, as an admin fee, just subscription fee, and I can roll through all the services that we provide as a result of that. Um, of the 145, 70 percent is converted to Bitcoin and is put into a Swan Bitcoin account, and it is yours. We don't have access to it. We can't draw from it. We can't do anything to it. It's yours. Um, and so literally, we, we, we can't do anything with it. It's totally on, on swans. Um, and so then the, the, the rest of the money sits in a, a, a bank account. If you, know, you have a, a broken arm and it's $6,000, you would pay the 500, first $500 of that. Crowd Health would then go and crowdfund fifty five hundred dollars of that. So, the, and the way that works is, I would go to, which is for example, fifty five people and ask for a hundred bucks out of that account that they have. I'm not asking you to put a hundred dollars more in. It's just you have that yep. that bank account that is stacking up as the months go by. And I'm saying, hey, will you take a hundred bucks from that bank account and and give it to you know whoever Andy um, for their their health event, right? Um, yep. And if they say yes, then that money is transferred from one account to the other account, so that Andy um, has has enough, you know, to to put in to to pay for that to pay for that broken arm. If they say yep. no, then we just move on to the next person. So it's totally voluntary. Um, yep. 
and we will we will go until um, we will we'll try to crowdfund up to 125 percent of your bill. So that means 25 percent of the people can say no, and the bill will still get crowdfunded. If more people say no than that, then it won't get crowdfunded. And and let me kind of back up and and, and how that works. So if you say no, so the question is if why would I say yes to Andy's broken arm, right? Like this is yep. not a, you know, a heart tugger, right? That you'll, you'll see on GoFundMe or something like that. Yep. Um, but we have a, 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 an internal reputation score that says, you know, Brian um, said no, nine out of 10 yep. times. Um, yep. And so his reputation score is 10. So 10, yep. 10%. Yep. Um, and so if Brian tried to go in and crowdfund something, all the people in the community will be like, dude, Brian's only given one out of 10 right. times. He's a crappy member of the community. I'm not giving it right. to Brian. You know, yeah. Andy, if he gave nine out of 10 times or, or whatever, oh, Andy's been a good member of the community. I'm going to fund him. And so there's this kind of reciprocity engine that drives this ultimately um, that people just want to help good members of the community yep. and they don't want to help bad members of the community. And so... Um, so far, if you've had a 95% or above reputation score, then you've gotten funded. Um, mm -hmm. That's not a guarantee. It's just statistics. Um, and yep. so it is working. We've we've crowdfunded yep. uh, over 300 bills, everything from brain hemorrhages to pediatric visits. Yeah. Talk, talk to us about the, the math side of it, though, a little bit, too, because when I was using the word pool, I, th I was more saying like risk pool, right? Like actuary table. Don't, there's a little bit of like, um, it's very, it's a little, it's sophisticated though also, right? It's not just um, like, aren't there stats on when you have a thousand people, like how many broken arms are going to come up and then you know, based on how much you're charging per like member that. Yeah. The interesting, so, yeah. but, so, so everybody wants to say, you know, what is your actuarial tables? And like, we're not health insurance, right? So we don't have actuarial okay. tables. We don't do any of that. Nope. So, but here's, okay. here's the thing. And, and the reason we can't, there's, there's a couple of reasons we can't. One is regulatory wise. I can't use actuarial tables. So, okay. um, so we don't. Um, and then yep. two is, Nobody has actuarial tables for our population. And so, you know, people are bewildered by this, but, you know, tell us what that to, means. Yeah, tell us yeah, what that so, means. So, so one is our population is, I think the la last number I saw is, was average of like 36 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So we are significantly younger than the general population. So actuaries, mm -hmm. basically what they do is they say, what is the general, the probability of an event happening within a big population? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know what the health plans pay for that event. And so we can use the probability times what it will pay to get, you know, kind of the actuarial table. Well, one is our people are 60% uh, male. They are in their mid 30s. They are 60% single. Um, mm -hmm. And so these demographics like blow up all the actuarial tables. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then and then not only that, but if one of our members has a health event, our health events are um, the, the, the price that our members are paying for their health event is, you know, 50 percent of what a health plan would pay. Yeah. And so and so that really screws up all the, the tables. Right. Um, yeah. And so. You know, we, we do not look at actuarial tables. I can tell you, you know, the last number I saw was like 24% of the money that has been put into these accounts has been used for yeah. a health event. So if you have a hundred, yeah. if you put in a hundred bucks, you still have $76 left in your account. And yeah. by the way, like if you leave crowd health, you get that money. We take a, a little yeah. closure fee, but you get the vast yeah. majority of that money that's sitting in that, in that account. Yeah. So yep. in the Bitcoin example, if you have Bitcoin and you're stacking sats every single month, yep. right, and you have sats left over at when you leave, we don't want you to leave. But if you do, you, you take those yep. sats with you. Um, yep. You know, and we have some people who have, I think I tweeted the other day, it was like, I don't know exactly the number, it was like 3000 or 3500 bucks that they had accumulated, yep. you know, over a period of time yep. that hasn't been used. And it's like, yep. man, if, if you were in health insurance world, like that would be gone. Right. Yeah. In our, in our world, you you're actually accumulating, you know, assets yeah. as you as yep. you go because it's your account. It's not our account. Yep. It's almost like renting versus owning a home, like that whole thing. Like you're you're building equity in the account, and it's also to me like the name is Crowd Health, but it's also you're also almost self insuring, like through yeah. your savings, like the savings because because what is the purpose? I think I think your the the ear nose and throat example that you started with was a great example, like. 
you were paying 14,000 ish dollars a year for to to protect the downside event yes. of the $8,000 hitting at an inopportune time. And but it didn't work. Like if you had just moved the $14,000 monthly into your own bank account, then you would have paid like you would have self-insured. And that's what you that's what you've been realizing. And this is so it's like so you're self-insuring through and then crowd health is still protecting your out your your downside like risk from long tail events. Yeah, I would say not crowd health, but the community of people around you are helping you if you have a a big event, right? And and we're we're facilitating that. Um, but mm-hmm. it is it is really it's not crowd health, it's the community of of people that are are in that. And by the way, for our Bitcoin folks, you know, we're we have a Bitcoin crowd. And so it's actually only Bitcoiners who are, um, you know, funding each other's. So you've got a Bitcoin and I was at Bitcoin 22 as well. I'm going down the hall. I mean, these people are are vastly more healthy, take a lot more personal responsibility for their health. It seems to me um, like than the general population. Um, The other thing is, is like, look, if you think you're a part of a system that's screwing you, like everybody does thinks of health insurance is that we're getting screwed, then you're going to yep. try to to suck as much out of that system as possible, right? And so we've got all these people throwing money into a big pool in health insurance. They're all trying to suck as much out of the system. Let's do lab tests and, you know, like, and it's like, what if you had a group of people that knew if you were trying to suck as much out of the system, other people would be having, to, would have to st- sell their sats to help you. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, different approach to the way that we go about consuming healthcare in that environment yep. than in the current health insurance environment. So yeah. we think that the crowd health or the crowd, the Bitcoin crowd is going to have way lower, probably 15% of what the general population has in healthcare costs. I mean, it's mm-hmm. that staggering. How, yeah. How does the model hold up? as as it starts to grow like call call it into the general population like so as it grows what how will that work like as it begins to put a dent in like the legacy world and people do have this option to keep on defecting how does how does the model grow yeah i mean i think so there's a couple things one is if you're not taking personal responsibility for your health currently we don't let you in um so you know a part of a few things is like if you're if you're a smoker, I'm sorry, like you're five times or something like that more expensive than the normal person. Nobody else should have to pay for your, you know, lung cancer. Um, mm-hmm. I that sounds crass, but you you know what I'm saying. Um, mm-hmm. If you're you know significantly overweight, then you can't join the, the the community either. And so you know our our BMI of our average member I think is four or five points lower than the the national average. Um, I think it was like mm-hmm. four point three or something like that the last time I, I looked at it. And so, um, and and then I I I think I'm hoping that as we get these communities together, the Bitcoin community, we're going to start a realtor community, we're going to start a trainer community, that the the affinity um, will incentivize people to you know reconsider the, the way they they consume their their healthcare. Um, and so we think it'll scale, you know, really, really well, but there's gonna have to be behavior change. You know, we spent a lot of our time on behavior change, you know, instead of just throwing down your insurance card and not worrying about the cost, we're saying, Hey, yep. we, we want you to ask what the cost of this is going to be before yep. you pay for it. I mean, this is yep. the only service on the planet. I think where like you go in, they make you sign a form that says, I'll pay anything that you bill me and without having an, any idea of how much it costs. Right. Yep. Um, one of my, another one, a quick experience, uh, experience for me is like, this is probably way, way too much information, but I had to get a colonoscopy because with some family history. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, I have no, I freaking clue what a colonoscopy, you know, right. costs. um, we, I tried to go do it by myself and it was, I it came up with 3,500 bucks. I, uh, you know, asked crowd health to do it. Crowd health found me to somebody who is actually was the same doctor for 800 mm-hmm. bucks. Um, mm-hmm. and so it's like, I, I don't know if a colonoscopy is supposed to be 800 bucks to 3,500 bucks. Right. We're just not programmed to think about right. costs when it comes to, to healthcare. So we're trying to reprogram people to think about costs. We are adding, uh, market forces to, to, 
you know, to the healthcare system. And we think that's going to have an incredible, you know, impact. I, I, I joke, you and I have more uh, negotiating power against the hospital, the healthcare system than United Health does. And so mm-hmm. here's why I say that, right? Mm-hmm. I have two big hospital systems. I'm, I'm in Austin. I have two big hospital systems in Austin. United Healthcare comes into Austin and says, I can't lose one of these healthcare systems because nobody would pick United Health if one of these hospital systems was left out of my network, right? Yep. And so these two hospital systems say, you can't lose me with jack up rates, right? And United mm-hmm. Health is kind of like, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to jack up rates. For yep. me, right, I go into the hospital, let's just say I, you know, have a, a an ER, you know, event, whatever it ends up being, and it's $50,000. Yep. They look at Andy and they say, okay, I can, I have a decision to make. I can, you know, put Andy into bankruptcy, right, by charging him $50,000, or I can negotiate with Andy. And most of the times they'll negotiate and I'll get mm-hmm. 60% off of that like that. And they'll yep. even stretch it out over a period of time at 0% financing. And so it's way easier for me to pay for. So I'm getting way better pricing, way better terms than United Healthcare, which I said is, you know, before is like the seventh largest company on the planet. Um, yeah, we, we've got to introduce market forces into into healthcare to to change to change the game here, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, the other place I want to talk about market forces in behavioral change is kind of on our own decisions. Like you brought up, like smoking and being overweight, and like, and I brought up kind of the how I'm trying to think about like wearables and health tech wearables, like more. And like, I've never been to a doctor that cared what my health tech wearables said. I've only been to a doctor who takes my blood pressure once and weighs me once. And then they have no, like, there's no chart. Like they don't have a line graph. They have like one point in time. And then they're talking to me about that. There's no line graph. And it's like, I am looking for like consultants in my life. Like I want people that are experts in things, you know, like that's YouTube. Like the whole reason why I enjoy watching YouTube and enjoy participating and making videos for YouTube is because like sharing information that then you can do behavioral change and like learn how to make your finances better or learn how to like work on your house better, like do something. And it's like, for me, that's been very hard. I don't, I didn't grow up with like a culture of like, Oh, try to be healthy for XYZ benefit. And and it's like when and when health insurance is tied to our employer and it's just kind of this like random HR thing that I, we don't like I don't think about at all. And you're right, you lay down the card and just is what it is. It then when you're walking through the grocery store or when you're picking what to eat or whatever, there's just both those worlds are just so yeah. disconnected. It's not connected. And so for me, I'm very like financially driven, like as a person. And so if, if I could be like, Oh, I have to like be this certain health to participate, like in this thing to then save money off of like what I would be paying for this other insurance. That's cool. Like that's motivating because then there's literal leftover resources that my family can use to do like do any drive a nicer car, like have nicer things like for my family. That's literally like, instead of the bureaucratic system like sucking efficiency away from me i'm retaining efficiency and like i'm my life that's physically what my life is getting better like my physical life is getting better you know so that to me that's like where that's then where the behavior change would like come for me sure yeah no i think there's a lot of stuff there one is um you know the system has forced primary care physicians to, you know, just treat you kind of like a cattle call, right? It's just like, mm-hmm. they, they got to get, I don't know what it is, like, you know, 40 or 50 people in a, a, you know, a day or something crazy like that to make mm-hmm. to make any money. Because, you know, yep. while the big hospital systems have tons of negotiating power, the little primary care physician has zero negotiating power because there are so many of them, you know, across mm-hmm. the, the city or the country, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so they're, they're, they're I think, I, I think I saw something yesterday that, CMS again is like reducing the, the, the pay to primary care physicians. And so those are supposed to be your primary consultants. Now they don't have the, the, the last primary care visit that I, I did prior, prior to crowd health was seven minutes. I had mm-hmm. seven minutes with my, you know, about my entire body and my health. Like I'm like, right. how the right. hell do you do this in seven minutes? Right. It just right. doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, we really like direct primary care. I don't know if you're familiar um, or your audience is, but direct primary care is basically instead of paying your insurance plan, you pay a doctor directly 
-hmm. and they are your consultant. You can call them Mm -hmm. any time of day. Uh, If you have an issue, you can email them, you can text them. Is this the concierge? Is this the same as concierge position? (coughs) Similar. I was going to ask that. Similar. Yeah, similar. And so I, what I love is you can do crowd health. You can add on direct primary care. And we're actually trying to integrate direct primary care yeah. as, as we speak into crowd health so that you can have, mm-hmm. you know, their, your primary care. Cause I think that's really important. And you can have, you know, the, the big events, you can help you out with mm-hmm. the big events. And so that combination to me yeah. is super important. Um, and, and those direct primary care docs, uh, they, they do act as consultants, you know, they, yeah. they don't try to do this like, you know, for yeah. your a day. But, yeah. So the other thing that has like, kind of just been this, like rubbing me the wrong way about healthcare is like, I don't, or there's this thing about like, you know, if you ask for financial advice, they're like, Oh, well go ask your financial advisor. Or when you ask for tax <laughs> advice, they're like, well, here's what I think. But like, do your own research, ask, ask your CPA or they're like, Oh, ask your attorney. You're like, Oh, ask your, pri-. dude, I don't have any of these things, dude. I yeah. don't have, I don't, I don't have a primary care physician. I do not have a CPA. I don't have a lawyer. I don't have a finance. Like I don't have any of those things. I have YouTube and I have like software as a service. That's it. Yeah. Like, okay. So I'm like, why? And whenever I try to interact with any of these other things, it just is so clunky and awkward and weird. Totally. Like I've literally tried to like call like lawyer offices and be like, Hey, like I'm thinking about this. Could you like, and it's so awkward. Like Mm -hmm. I don't know how to buy their service. And I Mm -hmm. feel the same way about like healthcare. I'm like, dude, I don't know how, like here's super like, I worked at Safeway as a kid and I like pulled the milk across the thing, probably the wrong way, like 300 (laughs) times too many or whatever. And so my wrist hurts. So it's not this, like, it doesn't kill me. It's not this like thing or whatever, but I would love to talk to someone about that and just figure it out. But sure. I don't know how to do that. And I don't know if that I'm just so dumb, but like, I don't know, dude. Like what? So yeah. I, want, I think like, people are lost or, in this health system, yeah. right? Like they're, we're lost. Yeah. We have no idea. I mean, I think you, yeah. your, your thing is a perfect example. Here's the thing about, about, you know, as we were building this company, what I wanted, right. Mm-hmm. I call into my health insurance plan after this EN, this ear, nose and throat thing. And I talk to one person. The next time I call, I talk to another person. I have to re-explain my situation. I, yeah. Next time, I'm like, how many freaking people do you have in this call center? I think I've talked to like 20 of them. And yep. so at Crowd Health, you have a care advocate. You talk to the same mm-hmm. person every single time. If you pick up the phone, you talk to, you know, who Jasmine or Maggie or whoever it is, right, internally. Yep. Every single time, you'll talk to the same person. So you're not yep. in this this person, that person, this person. Yep. And these people are really good at helping you navigate the system. We want to be an ally to you in navigating right. the system. And so you come to us and you say, right. my, my, my wrist really hurts. And they're like, okay, well, let's get you to an orthopedic, you know, an orthopedist and, yeah. you know, take yeah. a look at the, at the wrist and you probably, you know, might need to do an x-ray or something. And so let us yeah. figure out where a good place is to do an x-ray. And if you need yeah. anything more than an x-ray, please call us so that we can help you yeah. find a really good place. Um, because if you go to a hospital system and you, I don't know, maybe you need a MRI or something, right? Yeah. Like that in a hospital system is like $4,000 outside the yeah. hospital system. It's probably like $400. Right. And so yep. there's a big difference and we, we can help you kind of navigate all of that. Yep. And, um, I'll, whereas in other places you have no idea where, how to do this. Right. Um, yeah. so that was a really important component of our service is we wanted to be your ally in navigating a pretty yeah. complex system. Yeah. Let's talk about the, the cost savings and the negotiation sure. and exactly what you're saying of like the physician, but from the alternate side, because I think introducing more market forces has the ability, like doctors are also annoyed about the bureaucracy, oh, right? Man. Like You're some, our biggest fans. Some lo- yeah. So t- talk to us about that. What is frustrating about it from their side and how is crowd health changing? Yeah. And, and I think this kind of like kind of dovetails into like why we're so much less expensive than, than other mm-hmm. stuff. Um, Doctors spend about 30% of their time dealing with health insurance plans. Um, doctors have three or four administrative people per doctor to help them navigate insurance and administrative issues. And so, you know, think about it this way. You go in um, for a broken arm. You put punk, punk down your card. The doctor has get a, got to get a pre-authorization to do, you know, the the let's say it was a bad broken arm, right? The pre-authorization yep. to do the surgery. He's got to call people at the ho- hospital system. He hates doing this. He's like, this sucks. Yep. The administrative people have to bill it. 
Um, and by the way, the billing software, just to bill it, takes 6 to 10 12% off the top. Um, so that's one scenario. Yep. That's our, our, our current system. Crowd Health says, here's a credit card. Swipe it. That's it. It's you get yep. a percent and a half or a two percent, you know, uh, yep. transaction. I mean, yep. man, yep. with lightning, at some point it'll be like that, and yep. it'll be you know, yep. a fraction of 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 that. So I mean, ultimately, yep. that's where we'd like to go. Um, but the the doctor's like, wow, like you'll t- uh, you'll give me thirty percent of my time back. You'll pay yep. right now versus a health plan will pay 60, 90, 120 days from now. So there's a, there's a, a, a cost of that. Right. Um, and so, you know, doctors love it. Do we have doctors calling us literally every day being like, how can I be a part of your network? And like, well, we're not a network, right. but if there are people right. in our area that want to go to a orthopedic surgeon, you know, we'll yep. put you on a list and we'll call you, you yep. know, when that, when that occurs. Um, so they absolutely love what we're doing and more and more of them want to do, cash pay only yep um yep they, they just love it yep but then it requires then the behavioral change of the because we've done a little bit of cash pay for our son um or actually exclusively cash pay for our son and but paying that like 200 dollars a visit that takes a little bit of rework also because yeah. it's like it's like oh like because it because it gets back to like oh they're the like 30 minutes of their time is $200. Like this is a very, like, uh-huh. this is a professional, like this is very real professional consulting at $400 an hour. And we're like paying for it. Like, yeah. and it's reintroducing. Um, we, we've been abstracted away from that. Like I haven't seen this person like a professional, like I've just been seeing it like a faceless, just, thing that I'm like dealing with rather than like a like professional consultant who's on my team receiving like an hourly wage that reflects like the amount of information that is in their head. Yeah. And the, and the value of their work, right? Like if they're, if they're a crappy doctor, you're not going back to a crappy doctor if you have to pay, pay them. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so economically for us, we've saved as a family about $10,000 a year on our healthcare. Um, yeah. And that's assuming kind of like minimal healthcare expenses. If if we had a big event, we would save significantly more than that by by using mm-hmm. you know, crowd health versus something else. I think this year um, for my family of four, it's going to be something like fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars a month on mm-hmm. healthcare.gov, and then on mm-hmm. top of that, it's another eight or nine thousand. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it is, but eight or nine thousand of deductible. You know, so that means we'll have to pay twenty. Three twenty four, twenty five, something like that. Thousand dollars before the health plan pays a dollar, right? Yeah. Um, and then Crowd Health, we as a family pay six ninety five for a family of four. So you know, say seven hundred times twelve, eighty four hundred dollars. And by the way, yep. that's going into an account that's owned by me, and so I'm probably not going to use that all for crowdfunding. So you know, and if we have used the last year, I only used twenty five percent of that for crowdfunding. So it actually only cost me. $2,500 or something like that, um, less than that. Um, and so it's, it is a massive, massive savings. It's, it's, it's 10 or 15 grand a year, probably for the average family. Um, you right. know, divide that by, you know, two or three, if it's an individual. Um, but there are right. massive savings to be had by using this as opposed to, you know, something else. And think back to my example right. of that, of that doctor, right? That doctor saves 30% of his time, he saves, you know, 8% of his transaction fees. He saves on the billing. So that doctor is willing to give me 30, 40, 50%, depending upon the procedure discounts versus what the right. health plans pay for. So right. we, got a, we got a healthier population. We're getting 30 or 40% discounts. ER visits, we're getting 60% discounts. And that's okay. how the math of all that works. If you're kind of saying, how, how does crowd health do it for so much cheaper? Well, that's why. That's the math. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's start to kind of wind down on this because I want to like hit back and just talk about the end game and like winning and like winning. But then sure. I also really like this that you posted on LinkedIn a while back. You oh posted, <laughs> you posted the biggest difference between being an entrepreneur in my twenties versus an entrepreneur in my forties is that I've realized realized there's more to life than the business. My wife, my girls, my faith are vastly more important than my startup. That allows me to relax a bit and think and and it results in making better decisions as a result because i'm feeling a little just like in the trenches right now like not really sure that like we can 
win, honestly. Like to be to, and I'm not normally that guy. I'm not normally that guy. Mm. And so reading this this morning, I think was just encouraging and kind of just hearing the way that you talk about like like big scale reform, like big scale reform, like going the distance, like on these things. Um, what are those connected for you? Like, am I making a good connection between those two things? Or talk to me about just kind of some wisdom of like being involved in business and being involved sure. and like trying to put a dent in the world for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really like, what are your values? Like for me, it's, it's my, my values are my, my, my faith, and my family are one and two in my life. And so if the business falls apart, you know, I, I'm still, you know, a husband, a dad, like, and, and those things are the most important to me. And so if those are the most important to me, if, if Andy, the entrepreneur or the CEO or whatever falls apart, then it's way easier for me to pick myself back up and keep going because my identity is not CEO entrepreneur and I'm missionally, I'm fired up about it. There's nothing. And I would be bummed if, if crowd health didn't work for whatever reason. Um, but I do fall back on like, okay, my wife still loves me. My girls still love me. Like that to me is way more important than, you know, crowd health succeeding or, or failing. Um, and that's basically what I was saying by that. And I would say yeah. in my twenties, it was all about, let's make as much money as possible. How many zeros are in my bank account? All yeah. of those things. And now it's like, man, like I would take my girls and my wife over zeros in a bank account, you know, any single day. And so that's kind of what I was trying to say in that tweet is like, what is your identity? You know, yeah. um, for me, it's a child of God. It's a husband and it's a father, right? That's my yeah. identity. And CEO is yeah. down the line. Um, yeah. And so that's, I, that's, that's why, you know, I, I, that, that was what that tweet right. was about. No, and I love it and I can feel it. And I want to swap out, but just for a second, like I want to swap out missional, like missional for how you're talking about the ones and the zero ones and zeros because totally, but then it's also very sad. Like if crowd health fails, like the world that our kids and our families and our community lives in is sad. Like yeah. that sucks, dude. That like the suck. weight of that, like the weight of that is just very like heavy on my brain today. And so I'm, you're like my guy sure. for today's episode of just like, that's just heavy on my brain. Cause I, I'm, I'm with it, like intellectually about the ones and zeros and about family and about community. It's the like establishment feels very big to me today. Mm -hmm. And it, so I'm down for the day to day of just like, you know, going at the right pace and like avoiding burnout and like doing that stuff. Um, but it's like, like, dude, we need to, we have to win. Like, this is very serious and that's heavy. Yeah, it, it is. And and so I, I guess if you, if you consider the opposite side of that and say, we don't, right. Mm -hmm. That Bitcoin fails. I don't think it will. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it won't. If our healthcare still is totally screwed up, you know, um, what ultimately are we left with a shitty monetary system and a shitty healthcare system? Mm -hmm. So if we end up in that place, right. Um, like I said, I still have a God, a, 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 a wife and girls that love me. And so I'm okay. Like I'm okay. Yeah. If all of those things fall apart, I still have that. Right. Yeah. And, and so if, if I let monetary policy, healthcare policy or whatever have a huge like suck on my emotional energy, if they don't work out, yep. then for me, it's like I'm putting healthcare or monetary or whatever above my family. And mm -hmm. that's where it has to be a little bit of a heart search there and says, why am I so fired up about this if this doesn't work? Right. Yep. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not, I won't be fired up about it, but it's like, Right. Will I lose everything if it doesn't work? No, I won't. Like life will go right. on. But I like, I really think that, you know, God put me on this planet. I mean, maybe this is not very humble, but no. I'm like, to like, like change something like, and, Correct. and if I'm Correct. wrong, then I'm wrong. Right. Like that's yeah. okay. Like, but yep. I, I truly believe right now is it's like, look, I've given you talents. I've given you yep. skills and go and use them to make the world a better place. Right. Yep. And so that's just the way that I think about it. Um, and if and I'm connecting, wrong on that, I might be, uh, but I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. That's why, I, or I'll, if I didn't, if I thought I was wrong, I wouldn't be doing this because this is hard. Like Bitcoin is hard. Healthcare is hard. <laughs> 100%. Um, no, look, and then connecting that to the private equity discussion we had, 
the amount of people that have to go to work for the establishment to feed their families is too high. That number is too high. Like, and so we need more people. Like, there's a supply chain problem. There's not enough use. Like, there's not enough use, and there's not enough then use employing people to leave the establishment to then do this because there's not enough people joining crowd health and leaving. Like, you know what I mean? It's all yeah. connected. And so we need like that. That is a lot of what I think about day to day of just well, this snowball. Here's, here's the other thing too. And I, I don't mean to pile on here, but it's like, you know, we, the, the Rand corporation came out, I think it was last year, maybe the year before and said there's somewhere between two and a half and 4 million people in this country that would go and do something entrepreneurial um, if it weren't for health care costs, right? Yeah. That means that means we have 4 million people that are sitting yep. in jobs that want to go yep. do something entrepreneurial that can't because health in, healthcare is too expensive, right? And yeah. that's to me, it's like, man, that sucks because that's anti-American. Like we should have, anybody should be able to go and Correct. start a company if they want to. And the Correct. fact that they're stuck to their jobs which by the whole way is another situation. I don't think jobs should be, you know, dealing with your health care. Like get yep. rid of it, pay me in mu- cash. I'll yep. go figure out how yep. to take care of my health care. Yep. Um, yep. You know, and so I was like, let's, that- release, let's release those people into the entrepreneurial yes. world so they can create value as opposed to sitting at a desk job at a big corporation. Yes. That is a very hopeful place to end it on. I'm actually really thankful you said that because you're exactly right. You're like, that's another way how crowd health and like helping people defect from like, their insurance and have another way of splitting up the cost that's going to like solve this like issue that we're all feeling of like what like things feel stagnant like um solutions to problems that we're all facing feel stagnant right now and you're right if people had the ability to make a pencil to leave their job they can which bitcoin is helping and which your like service is helping that's really cool um yeah, help, i appreciate that so Close us off with, yeah, where people can get in touch with you and how they can book a demo um, to run their, like, exact numbers for themselves. Yeah, sure. So um, crowdhealthbtc.com is the best place to go if you're interested in the Bitcoin version of, of what we're doing. And I would just, you know, I, this, this may sound like a sales pitch, but I'm like, look, we can we can sit here and moan and groan and bitch about, you know, all the things that are going wrong. But it's like, we got to do something. We got to take action. Right. And if you are as pissed off, you as in the listener of this, if you're as pissed off about this as the two of us are, like come and come and join us. Right. And yeah. and I'll take feedback. Yeah. And I this yeah. is not about again, not about making a ton of money for me. It is truly about like let's change the way that healthcare is delivered. And you yeah. can be a part of that. So join us, come be a part of it. Use the code Bitcoin. Um, we give you a discount for the first six months because what we found is for the first six months, people don't even use this because it's healthy people. So, um, you know, it, it works. So we'd love for you to join us. Perfect. Thanks so much, Andy. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, all, this is Brian. You can reach me on Twitter at Brain Harrington. Shoot me a DM with any feedback from today's episode. This has been a Choice App production. Bitcoin is becoming centric to personal finance, and we want to help you learn how to better engage with Bitcoin financial services. None of this is financial advice and is for education and entertainment 